Harbour Riders, Galleons of Spain off Jersey Coast. Is that really your idea of how to run a newspaper? I don't know how to run a newspaper, Mr. Fletcher. I just try everything I can think of. Charge, you know perfectly. Wells was not only director, producer, and co-writer of Kane, he'd also decided to play the central character himself. Not such a challenge while he was playing a youthful Kane. Mr. Thatcher, my ex-guardian. The idea was to look very young indeed, indeed younger than anybody ever could look. And my whole face was yanked up with pieces of fish skin in the way old ladies uh, are fixed up nowadays. Uh, yes, in that way. I, I can't help feeling you must have been young sometime, Orson. I was certainly 25 years old, but there's a sort of... Uh, untouched look about that face you may have noticed that uh, <laughs> impossible in real life but the character of Kane ages from a young man to a decrepit invalid in his 70s transforming the 25 year old Wells became the responsibility of an unqualified young man working as a sweeper of hair in the RKO makeup department I had a little corner all to myself and uh, in that place, I had clay, and I had um, my tools and everything else, and I would spend as much time as I can creatively, because it was important. Orson saw me playing with noses and the ears and things like that, and he wanted to know if I could completely change his face. I said, sure. So he, he says, you're absolutely sure. I said, I'm absolutely sure. So what do you have to do first, he said. And I said, I have to take an impression of your head, the whole head. He liked the idea, and when we got the materials, he came in, and he sat down in a chair comfortably, uh, and I covered him up, There's everything cooking. Uh, after I got him covered and so that he couldn't move, I uh, asked Bill Allen, to whom I was uh, more friendly than the, to the rest, to please read uh, Fantasius Miller, which had some very interesting things, and I thought Orson should hear it. The Kingdom of Evil by Ben Hecht. He is a gigantic man with a large head. His face is expressionless. When he looks at me, he seems made of wax. Yet he is stronger than a hundred men. A hundred, I write. There is no limit to his strength. Again, we face him. He regards us, and we grow weak. He is like a monster that walks on the edge of a dream. Calm, waxen, towering. It is impossible to approach him. I think as we stand, is he alive? What power surrounds him? See, we are all trembling before his eyes. A sense of puniness overcomes us. I can almost remember him, as if I had caught a glimpse of him moving through the annihilated streets. Yes, there is something familiar about this monster. I made a cap to cover his head. And I disliked very much the idea of a man having a, a cap on his head, pushing his forehead like this, and with rubber over here. And all he does, he goes like that, and now it, he releases his face underneath, like I'm releasing now, for instance, and it doesn't go back like that. It goes back very slowly. What happened is that when I stretched this thing, I put it on with elastics. It's attached to him, so there's a whole series of elastics there. If he goes like this, it comes down like that. This was so uh, new that uh, he let me go further and further in this. You're in a tent, darling. You aren't at home. I can hear you very well if you speak in a normal tone of voice. You never gave me anything in your whole life! You just tried to buy me into getting you something. Susan! If you really weren't qualified in those days, how was it the studio let you do Orson Welles' makeup? Because they didn't think he'd ever make a movie there. <laughs>